If you're looking at like, for in this example, we're using the dot map method on the array uh, object in JavaScript, and but this applies to any documentation for any of these methods on any of the JavaScript stuff. So a lot of times, as a beginner, you'll be going through documentation, which if you get this far, you're on the right track. So that's good. Give yourself a pat on the back. But you have a question. You're wondering how does dot map work, right? Or maybe you don't even know what dot map is, and somehow you found your way here uh, through your search. So you see the demo of it. Okay, great. That kind of makes sense to me. And then if you go down and look at the syntax, this is the part that usually trips people up. And that is the syntax. This this syntax right here, the syntax for the syntax, uh, has some stuff in it that you may not have normally seen before. So here we have let new array, right? That's just a variable equal to. So we're just initializing a variable and then some array something that's another variable called ARR is just referencing some random array of whatever dot map so we're calling the dot map method on the array and then inside of here so here's the opening there's the closing parenthesis there's a callback function which takes an argument here called current value but then there's an opening uh, bracket on the end of it and then there's a comma and there's another argument index with another opening bracket and then another one array and this one has two closing brackets after it so the brackets are probably confusing uh, if you haven't seen this sort of thing before and then you have the area where you can write your code it says return element for new array after executing something and then over here you have your open bracket and close bracket again with a comma and it says this arg. So if you scroll down to parameters, it actually tells you for callback what the callback is, right? So it's a function that is called for every element of array. Array is what the dot map method is being called on. And then each time the callback executes, the return value is added to a new array, which is this uh, variable that we're assigning the result of this whole uh, procedure to. Okay, so the callback function accepts the following arguments. The first one is current value, which is what we have here. We still haven't figured out what the heck this opening bracket is though. And then something called index that is optional. Again, it has that opening bracket, so we don't know what that is yet. And then array, optional. And then the this arg, uh, which if you notice, these are the arguments for the callback. And then this arg is the uh, second argument. So the first argument is callback. It has arguments and then the second argument is this arc. Anyway, so this one has brackets around it too. So at this point you're just like, what the heck are the brackets? So current value is required. It's a uh, going to give you the current element, the current value of each element in the array as you iterate over it. right? So that has to be there but then anything inside of the bracket, the brackets is optional as is denoted here. And so it's basically saying like, hey, current value is required, but then this left bracket and this closing right bracket, anything inside of here is optional. Not only that, but the index has its own set of brackets next to it, which surround the array. And so what it's telling you there is that not only is index optional, but array is optional. So you can do current value and index and array, or you can just do current value and index. What you can't do though, is you can't do current value, no index, and then array. If you have a second argument, the second argument represents the index. And if you have a third argument, the third argument represents the array. Now, if you don't want to use the index, but you still need access to the array, you still have to include the index right here as the argument. Um, so that's all the brackets mean. The bracket is just saying that anything inside these brackets is optional. It doesn't have to be included whenever we're using this. So if we apply that again, and we go down here to this next argument, the this arg, what this is, is the value to use as this when executing the callback. So it's just the context of whatever this is uh, for the callback. And uh, we won't get into exactly how that works. You can look it up, but basically, this is optional also. So you could pass in an object there or you could just leave it out altogether. And that's why they have it inside of the brackets. So all that to say, when you're going through any of these array methods or the object methods, 
string methods, number methods, anything like that for JavaScript and you're looking through the documentation and you get to the syntax portion and you start running into these brackets, just know that those are just indicative of whatever's inside of them being optional, which you can see here, they even say, hey, this is optional. So sometimes with uh, stuff like this, where you've no one's ever explained it to you or you haven't seen it before, uh, it's just helpful to kind of pause for a second instead of thinking immediately like, oh, I don't understand this, it doesn't make sense to me. It, it's better to just stop and read through the rest of it and try to figure out like, okay, I think this is what that means. And then of course you can always search on Stack Overflow uh, or ask someone like me and someone out there will tell you like, this is what that does. That's how I figured it out on Stack Overflow whenever I first was wondering what the heck that did. But yeah, that's just a thing that I feel like isn't commonly covered in a lot of these courses. And so I figured I would go over it real quick.